Let's get our HD Nation on. Many of you are staring at beautiful new HDTs that showed up under or at least near the tree. You want to make the video you show on it look its best? Let's do a fast calibration. Step number one, use an HDMI cable whenever possible, particularly if the source device that you're using is providing an HDMI output. Always, always, always. Stop using composite video. That's the yellow cable. VHX, uh, VHS decks I'll exclude in most cases. However, do you own a Wii? Spend six bucks on the component cable so you can enable not only 10 or 480p output, but also nice widescreen and improved detail as well. Now, during the TV's initial setup, you should have selected home use, not the store mode. That not only saves electricity, it will be optimized for daytime viewing as well. Now, the big trick here is to turn off overscan to improve picture quality. Most HDTVs default to a 16 by nine picture size. It's the right shape, but it, about 5% of that video picture is actually missing. If, get those pixels back and you'll have a sharper, more detailed picture. You pretty much have to dig into the settings in the TV. Generally speaking, a preset like cinema or movie will provide an improved picture, as uh, particularly detail and color accuracy, but it's best appreciated in a dark room environment, so turn down those lights. Other things to do, if you have a net connected TV, update the thing. Uh, if it has a room light sensor built into the TV, that's something else to experiment with. It might provide a way for you to have not only a bright picture during the daytime, but a dimly lit, eye-friendly picture that's very detailed when the room lights are turned down low. Now, if you have access to the internet or a DVD burner or a Blu-ray burner, we're going to put a link in the show notes that tells you how to get to a previous segment we did uh, a little earlier this year about full-on calibration, setting all the colors, levels, and the tone and the contrast, and really getting detailed with making your picture absolutely perfect. Totally. Yeah. I think the hardest thing I just described there was the overscan, because it's, it's, it's spelled out differently on every TV, and yeah. trying to find the specific setting can be a challenge on some sets. It just basically means for reasons of behaving just like analog TVs did in the past, they blow a whole bunch, 5% of your picture, a big chunk of pixels, out past the edge of the screen that where you can't see them. And you turn overscan off, and you get a pixel per pixel match, and everything is shiny. So pretty. If you've been thinking about buying any DVD HD, HD, any DVD HD, we, use, we, we both own this program. We both love, love this program. It's our favorite tool for archiving Blu-rays and DVDs. If you've been thinking about buying it, do it now. Because on January 1st, 2011, Sliceloft is dropping the lifetime update subscription op option. <laughs> option. No! This means this constantly <laughs> updated software will cost you every year if you don't buy the lifetime version now. It costs them a lot of money to keep this thing up to date because they spend a lot of time coding to make sure you can back up the latest Blu-rays and DVDs. To make the decision a little less painful, Slicesoft is offering 20% off on all their products, including upgrades from any DVD to any DVD HD and subscription renewals, again, until Friday, December 31st, 2010. That's when the lifetime plan goes away. Oh, tragic. So get it now yep. or forever hold your peace. 20% off. Got to do it. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> Laura wrote in, I want to buy some Region 2 UK DVDs and back them up as MP4 files. Is there an inexpensive region-free DVD player one can use on a Mac or PC? Can ripping programs make an MP4 from a Region 2 disc? If not, would a region-free regular DVD player, I see lots on Amazon, play OK on my composite-only TV? Ooh, that's sad. I don't want to do anything illegal. I just want to play DVDs I purchased. Understood. Thanks. Signed, Laura. So region codes essentially allow the studios to control the release of the disc across different regions of the world, right? There's like a, a big giant one for like North America and South America, another one for Europe and Asia and yada, yada, yada. You can search Wikipedia to get really technical about it, but the idea is that they release movies first like in the United States or Europe and then they sort of spread around the world. And totally. the places that get the new movies on the reel in the theater last, they usually about the time the Blu-rays are showing up in, in the in Europe or the United States, so they use region locked. Basically, all the Blu-ray or DVD players in a particular region are locked to only play discs coded to that region. It's an optional thing that yeah. the, the publishers can do, but they do it. Uh, it seems like mo more times than not, that disc will be region locked it's for a particular part of, part of the world. It's part of plan for controlling revenue distribution worldwide across the. It's basically there's. It's a fascinating science. Here's the thing, though. Technically, Laura, here in the United States, buying a region-free DVD player so you can play region two lock discs here in the region one is a violation of the DMCA. That's the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, which makes it definitely illegal. Hopefully the fair use <clears throat> recent rulings are, 
bending <laughs> that a little bit, but that's a different story. Yeah. Now, VLC on a PC can read the discs from yeah. any region, but some DVD drives, uh, Matsushita, Mashita, Panasonic drives back in the day, generally speaking, those drives have the region coding in their firmware, yeah. unlike the Blu-ray players nowadays where that's done in software. So you might try a DVD Fab region reset from dvdfab.com slash free to see if it'll work on your computer. No. No? Then let us get our civil disobedience on and rip the disc so you can get your UK content on. Just do me a favor, don't share it on BitTorrent, please. That's, that's Laura, you're not that kind of person we know. Just gotta say it for those other people out there. Anyhow, get any DVD and handbrake or the very free DVD Fab Decryptor. The internet will explain what to do with them. Either one will make the region code and DRM go bye-bye, and you can use them to convert your DVD into a delicious MP4 video that will play on your favorite portable devices. I want to say just for DVDs only, I think Handbrake will take care of the decryption and the conversion for you. Handbrake doesn't do used to. cracking. He used to. They're pretty adamant about that. Oh, okay. No, that's why you use Handbrake with any DVD. Uh, okay. In a DVD, it I have the any DVD accessible. logo sitting in my tray, so it's always running, and so I never notice yeah. these these region code issues or or, or incompatible issues. display technology hooked up or my well, old uh, yeah. Anyway. And please don't steal movies or nah, music off the fair internet. use though, definitely fair use. Yeah, I want to be. I bought the disc. I want to be able to use the content in my house. Totally. Please don't send lawyers after. Me. Hey, it's time for the new Blu-ray releases for the week of December 28, 2010. First up, the American. George Clooney gets all serious, restrained, and seriously late 60s in this spy thriller based on a novel, A Very Private Gentleman. Beautifully shot, carefully composed, and totally centered on the not-so-internal struggles of Clooney's very private hitman. We either love this film for harking back to an earlier style, or hate it for reeking of pretension. There's not much to the soundtrack, but the 1080p VC1 transfer makes Italian villages, butterflies, and dusty interiors radiant. Patrick's a big fan of this one, even if he wishes the director knew there was a big difference between a Mini-14 and an M-14. Next up, Surf Nazis Must Die from Troma. And if you're familiar with Troma, you probably already know what to expect. Released in 1987, it tells the story of a group of neo-Nazis who take over a Southern California beach, and the mother of one of their victims who breaks out of a retirement home to kick some ass and get revenge. Roger calls it schlocksploitation, and while it's gotten pretty bad reviews across the internet, Roger Ebert walked out after the first 30 minutes, but that's kind of the point. You don't watch these movies for the emotional storyline or the well-developed characters. You watch it to see some ass-kicking hilarity, and in that, it delivers. Also released this week, Marantau. This 2009 Indonesian film tells the story of a young man raised in a farming village who has to go out into the world and fend for himself. He travels to the city of Jakarta and ends up defending victims of a human trafficking ring with his awesome martial arts skills. Extras include a making of featurette and a behind the scenes segment, so if you're into kick and kill movies and want to see one that flew under the radar, check out Marantau. Other releases include 2010's And Soon the Darkness, Battlestar Galactica Razor, Derailed, Kamui Gaiden, the live action movie, Resident Evil Afterlife, Resident Evil Afterlife in 3D, and 12. Coming up, how long should my monitor last, a little Linux love, and more. But first, it's time to thank one of our sponsors, Squarespace. Squarespace offers users a flexible solution for anyone looking to create a blog, personal portfolio, or any kind of website. No matter what level of coding experience you have, Squarespace can provide the tools needed to create a high-end, complex website that is uniquely your own. Don't worry if you come across any questions or issues, Squarespace also offers every user 24-7 support. Squarespace just pushed a brand new social widget for geolocation services. Display your most recent check-ins from Foursquare, Goala, and Facebook places on a live Google map. Squarespace is the only web publishing platform with a native built-in solution for displaying your check-in data. The widget is totally customizable and fully integrated with the Squarespace Style Editor. Squarespace's iPhone app lets you publish your blog on the go and comment moderation. Get push notifications to approve new comments, mark existing comments as spam, reply to comments, and more, all from your iPhone. Many of the internet's most highly trafficked web pages are powered by Squarespace, not to mention many of the personal pages of Revision 3 hosts and personalities. Go to www.squarespace.com to learn more, and please be sure to enter the code TECHZILLA when checking out to earn 10% off the lifetime of your order. 